Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. It's Rust Belt Collector here, and today I am counting down my top 10 new toys from 2022. My only guidelines for this list were that they had to be released in 2022, and I did try to limit the number of repaints that I included on this list, but I also did have to be honest and pick the ones that I personally found to be my favorites. Now, once you get done with this video, I would love it if you would go down in the comments and list your top 10 or just your top five figures of 2022. I always enjoy reading what other people found exciting for the year and so yeah, leave those down in the comments and leave a like while you're down there. So I'm going to get the biggest one out of the way first and yeah, it doesn't really fit on my desk, but there is Hot Toys Captain Rex. Now I think, I think he came out technically in 2021, but it was like on the very tail end. I was one of the last people to pre-order this, I think, and so my pre-order came like in January or February of 2022. So I'm counting it as a release in 2022 because it was kind of a year end release. Likewise, if Arc Trooper Jesse from Hot Toys had released on its projected date, it would have been on this list, probably in place of Captain Rex. But I absolutely love this figure. It is so incredibly detailed and just looks so cool. The only minor thing that kind of bugged me, but now that I have it in hand doesn't really bug me, was that they stuck with his animated look. So his uh, his camera down here and his pauldron are very animated style. They're not the realistic style. And it kind of clashes with some of the other realistic elements on his armor. But again, having it in hand, I love it for what it is. It's an incredible, incredible figure. Next on my list is kind of a four for one deal here because these are all just repaints of the same exact figure. This being the G.I. Joe Classified Viper. The very first release of this figure was a Target exclusive. And I think it was like 2020 or 2021 when that came out but it was nearly impossible to find for a lot of collectors. So it's hard to even classify that as a release. Whereas these four figures all came out in 2022. These three on the left being part of a three pack from Hasbro Pulse. And this one on the right being the Python Patrol, which is a Target exclusive as well as a Hasbro Pulse exclusive, I think. So these might seem kind of simple, but personally, I love the Cobra Vipers. It's got to be one of my favorite designs from all of G.I. Joe. Between this and maybe some of the different Alley Viper variants, they're my favorite design from G.I. Joe ever. I really like the detail on the Python Patrol variant, but even just the standard blue and red variant is really, really nice looking. If you have not already, I would highly suggest picking up at least one of these. Next on this list is a figure that I would not have expected to be including, but that is the Halo 4 and 5 version of the Spartan Collection Master Chief. I am a fan of the classic Halo designs from Halo 1, 2, and 3, and I was never really sold on this design of Chief, but having this figure in hand is just so much fun. It is hyper posable because of the gaps between the armor plates. That's part of the design, but it lends itself really well to a well-designed figure that allows you for some really crazy articulation points. And I absolutely love it. While the knees on this figure aren't perfect, they are certainly a step up from the previous series. And I know that they are working on that so that I think in series seven, which is the one that's coming out now in spring of 2023, the knees will be much closer to the world of Halo knees, better articulation, better uh, incorporation into the overall sculpting, you know, just better all around. But these were certainly a step up from the previous wave. And I think that they do pretty well here. Again, they're not perfect. And it's probably my least favorite part of this whole figure but it's still such a good figure that had to make the list. One of the best things about this line, no matter which figure it is, is these chrome visors. They are so good to look at. They're a nice callback to the original Joyride Halo figures from Halo 1 and 2, and yeah, they just make for such a nice finishing touch to these figures. Another one of my top 10 figures is Clone Commando Fixer, and really it's this mold in general. It's a highly controversial clone mold. A lot of people are not happy that it reused the Hunter body. And truly, I was one of those people until I got Boss in hand, found out how poseable and just fun this action figure is as a toy, as an action figure. And now I am sold. I am completing the Delta Squad. I have Fixer, I have Sev, I have Boss, and I'm really excited for Scorch to come out in 2023. Now I chose Fixer as my favorite just because I really like his uniquely sculpted backpack and the little antenna on his helmet just adds a nice touch. Fixer was probably my favorite in the original game as well, and I've always just liked his green armor. Now, of course, all these figures are colored and sculpted in their Clone Wars style of armor. The paint deco is slightly different than their in-game counterpart parts and that annoyed some people. And I understand that because this is the gaming greats line. That has always been a little bit of a, 
a weird thing to me that they would do the Clone Wars art style in a series called The Gaming Greats. But for what they are as animated Clone Wars commandos, I do like them. I already have realistic commandos in the three and three quarter inch line, so these guys fill a great spot in my collection for animated Clone Wars style commandos. Of course, I hope someday that Hasbro does go back and do realistic styled ones off of the game, but until then, I still am a big fan of this mold. And as I showed on a recent post over on my Instagram, I think with a little bit of weathering, this just being some dry brushing and a paint wash, the Commando sculpt can really, really stand out. It may not be perfect to a lot of collectors, but it is a cool action figure, and that's what made it stand out to me. Zooming out for another chunky figure, we have the Spartan Collection Deluxe Jega Rodomni. Now I never got around to doing an official review of this figure. I did unbox him on a live stream a while back, but at the time there just wasn't room in my schedule to film every single figure that I got. And unfortunately this was one that I never got to really go in depth on. We got two really nice elite characters from the Spartan Collection last year, Jega and the Arbiter but this one improved upon some of the features that kind of were lackluster with the Arbiter, and while I think both are great, this one is just slightly better. Probably the biggest improvement was that they added a ball joint at the head, allowing you to pivot side to side like so, and overall, it's just a really fun figure to pose around. It's highly posable, it's also very chunky in hand, which I just kind of like for a big alien creature for the Spartan collection, you know? They did not... Uh, they did not lack on any of the scale for this figure. As you can see, even with the Elite hunched over, he really stands tall over Master Chief. And if they ever do Marines in the Spartan Collection, I can only imagine that they will be even smaller in the eyes of this magnificent figure of Jaga. So yeah, this is a great figure. I love that they just took a lot of the good things from the smaller 4-inch scale figure of this character, upscaled it to the 6-inch scale, and made a fantastic elite figure. Sometimes it's hard to balance this character just because of how many joints he has going on here in his legs and everything, so I would recommend if you want to display it, get some sticky tack, put it on the bottom of the feet, and you won't have an issue. This next one on my list is probably another controversial one, but yes, your eyes are not deceiving you. I have in fact put a bootleg AliExpress clone trooper on my top 10 list of 2022. Now most of the other bootleg figures that we've seen from AliExpress are not that special. They're just re-releases and copies of official Hasbro products, but this one in particular blew me away when I first saw it drop. Not only does it represent a character that we have not seen in figure form since, what, like 2010? This is Commander Bo, essentially. Though they don't call it that on AliExpress, this is Commander Bo. It utilizes the new clone mold, which is my favorite clone mold for 6-inch Black series, while still giving us some cool older accessories from Commander Bly, like the pauldron, soft goods, and holsters on his hip. They also incorporated the macro binoculars from Commander Bly onto the new clone trooper mold sculpt. They are fully articulated, and they look so good on a 501st clone trooper. I have been having fun posing this figure ever since I got it in the mail, and that puts it on the list. Anytime I get a new figure, in the mail and I find myself posing it a lot, just messing around with it on my desk, having fun with it, taking photos with it, that really makes it a standout figure. It doesn't have to blow my mind with some new inventive articulation or anything, it just has to be cool. And this figure is cool. It incorporates some old things with some new things and kind of just brings it all together into a really classic design and I absolutely love it. I know it's controversial to have a bootleg on a list like this, but hey, when a bootleg company is doing stuff that official companies aren't, they make it on the list. Now I know that many might say this is not a very exciting entry for this list. We've already seen this mold in the form of the bootleg back there, and we've already seen a repaint of a clone trooper in the form of Fixer back there. However, the 13th Iron Battalion has to be one of, if not, my favorite new clone trooper design, especially in canon. There isn't anything unique about this mold, it's been used before and it will be used again, but the markings are what make this figure special to me. Ever since I played Jedi Fallen Order, I fell in love with this clone trooper design. Heck, even before that, when I saw it in the trailer, I thought that is a really unique design for a clone trooper, and it doesn't feel busy, it doesn't feel over-designed, it feels very reminiscent of Revenge of the Sith markings, and yeah, it's a great color, it's a great design, and it looks fantastic on this Black Series mold. I think another thing that makes it stand out is that I never expected them to make this character. When I played the game, I thought, man, I would love to see this in figure form, 
but that'll never happen because it's not 2005 anymore and obscure clones from you know one mission in a game are never going to make it into plastic form like this but now we have it and really the only thing that could make this figure better in my mind is if it was in three and three quarter inch scale which maybe someday we will get with the new clone trooper mold coming out in vintage collection but until then this is absolutely my favorite clone trooper that hasbro has released in all of the black series line and i would absolutely love it if they continued their obscure deep cut references and made the commander of this unit that you only can find on a crashed venator hidden deep within the game we are nearing the end of this list and we haven't gotten a single three and three quarter inch four inch scale figure on this list until now this is the world of halo halo 5 master chief once again this is not a figure that i was super hyped for when i first saw it released but then getting it in hand it changed my mind it has a lot of great points of articulation it can be posed in a lot of really fun ways and just in general, it's a fun version of Master Chief to have in the collection. Now, I think what makes this figure lend itself to being such a fun action figure is the same thing that happened with the Halo 5 Master Chief back there. The armor plating has a lot of gaps in it, which means this figure is ultra posable. You can get the shoulders up really high. You can get the elbows crunched in and you can't really do that with all of the different Spartans. A perfect example is kind of the runner up. I was going to put this guy on the list. This is Halo 5 Spartan Buck. He has very similar armor. He has a lot of the same gaps that allow him to have really good ranges of motion. However, at his shoulder pads here, it's very bulky and he can only get his arms out to there, whereas Master Chief can get his all the way out to 90. So even though I prefer Spartan Buck's armor configuration and coloration, I think Master Chief is just the better action figure. He's more fun to play with, he's more fun to pose around, and it's always nice to get a figure that you were kind of on the fence about, and then once you have it in hand, it's actually really satisfying. And with that in mind, my number two pick for this list has to be Dark Times Darth Vader. I did not get this figure right away. I kind of slept on it. I let it sit there in my cart for a while and I was thinking maybe I'll get it, maybe I won't. And then I got it. And this figure has to be the best vintage collection figure probably in a very long time. You'll probably wonder why I say that when you see my number one pick, but no, this is absolutely the best new sculpt for vintage collection we have ever gotten. Not only do we have tons of soft goods here with his cape and his like mini cape down here, but he has the new articulation with ball jointed hips. There is a wide range of articulation with all of his joints, and he really brings together all of the engineering feats that the vintage collection has been working on over the past couple of years. But as if that wasn't good enough and he wasn't already the definitive Darth Vader figure in three and three quarter inch scale, he also came with interchangeable hands, which is a very interesting thing to see on vintage collection figures, especially one that isn't considered deluxe. So we have two interchangeable hands, the lightsaber and a lightsaber hilt that can be affixed to his belt. Tons of accessories for the $15 price point that he retails for, and honestly, I'm surprised they didn't try to pass this off as deluxe, but I'm very, very glad that they didn't. So if you were at all on the fence about this figure like I was, just get it. You will not be disappointed. This is probably the coolest figure that I have handled in Vintage Collection in a long, long time. And that is coming from somebody that is primarily a clone collector. I don't collect every character. I don't care if I have a version of Han Solo or Luke Skywalker, but this has kind of changed my mind about that. Now, before we get to the number one spot, we got to run down a couple figures that I'll consider my honorable mentions. First up, we have this G.I. Joe classified Tiger Force Outback. Outback is a really fun character, he's cool to pose, he's got a good design and everything, but he just didn't really top the other ones here on this list for me. It was a very close call though, he was definitely like, you know, if, there, if this was the top 11, he would be, you know, number 11. He was really close to being in the top 10, but he just couldn't make the cut. Next up was this Phase 1 Army Builder pack from the Vintage Collection. I really loved this set and what it does for the Vintage Collection clone army, however, these figures are not that unique. They are just, you know, the standard phase one skinny mold that we have gotten before. And the only really nice thing that I kind of considered to be cool about this pack is that we are getting all new Tamara Morrison head sculpts. That does make it unique. It does make it really cool and worth picking up but it doesn't make it that unique or that cool for a top 10 list. I know, I know these are also repaints and that 13th Iron Battalion clone is just a repaint but that was a special repaint for me. I really, really liked the 13th Iron Battalion. These two ARC Trooper repaints just, 
didn't quite do it for me. These two are still really, really cool. The ARC Trooper mold is still solid as well. If this was a more accurate version of Fordo, I would definitely have had him on the top 10. But unfortunately, I really can't even consider this to be a version of Fordo. I would just call this guy a cool clone trooper. He doesn't really have enough in common with the Fordo design to qualify him as Fordo. But still, they're clones and they look cool and I love their designs. I hope we get more of the Battlefront 2 ARC troopers in the Black Series line but they just had to be in the honorable mention section. They couldn't quite cut it for top 10. And honestly, even though this is like our hundredth version of the Halo Infinite Master Chief, this multi-pack with the weapon and the little Cortana hand here is really, really cool, but just not cool enough. There's not enough uniqueness on this Master Chief figure to have it on the list. This additional hand is really nice though. I do like that a lot. And this figure of the weapon is almost really cool. It's cast in some translucent plastic and the base lights up to kind of give you that hologram effect. But literally, this is the stance that the figure comes in. You can't move the arms apart from a swivel. You can't even move the arms into the same position that she is standing in here on the little hand piece. It's just kind of a, a statue almost. The pose is very awkward and yeah, like I would want to put this on the list if it was just a little bit better. If there was a little bit more uniqueness about this figure of Master Chief, and if this figure was just a little bit better, it would be on this list because I love this light up feature. I love the new hand piece, but yeah, it's just, it's lacking that top 10 quality. And for my number one pick of all new toys in 2022, it has to be the 2003 Tartakovsky ARC Troopers. Yeah, I mean, come on, these guys are so cool. And it came out of left field for so many of us collectors and fans of the old Tartakovsky Clone Wars. Before there was Captain Rex and all these other colorized clones with different markings and different units, there was the 2003 Clone Wars. These are designs that I would have never expected, probably in a million years, that Hasbro would actually make. Now, these character designs are at the core of what made me fall in love with the Clone Trooper aesthetic. I have drawings of these characters from when I was a kid, and I watched and re-watched the animated series from the library so many times. And so, obviously, it's pretty much a dream come true having these guys in figure form, finally. Yes, unfortunately, they are on the skinny mold, and that is really regrettable, but... It's the ARC Troopers from the Tartakovsky Clone Wars. I mean, these guys could be standstill. They could be little statues and I would still love them. And you already know, I had to complete the set. I had to get 10 of the blue ARC Troopers because it's the Monolith 10 and you can't really have the Monolith 10 without 10 ARC Troopers. So yeah, absolutely, these are my number one for 2022. They came out of left field. They are my favorite childhood characters. They are now in figure form. So while these may not be the most revolutionary figures or anything like that, they are very meaningful to me, and I would have never in a million years guessed that we were going to get these. And now having them in the collection, they really just kind of bring it all together. They look fantastic with my Tiger Shark gunship, and they bring together a piece of the collection that I was missing. But that is my top 10 new figures for 2022. I would love to hear down in the comments what you guys pick as your top 10, or again, top 5, whatever, maybe even just top 1. What has been your favorite figure pickup in 2022? This list has a lot of variety because I like to collect a lot of things. I collect a little bit of G.I. Joe, some Halo, some Star Wars, and different scales, three and three quarter inch, six inch, 12 inch even. But that's what makes collecting fun. You know, collect what you love and don't worry about, you know, what other people are collecting or if someone has a bigger clone army. One figure on an older outdated mold could be way more meaningful than any high tech new mold figure that ever gets released. And that's okay, that's what it's all about. So like I said, leave it down in the comments. What's been your top 10? I would love to hear from you. While you're down there, leave a like on this video and if you're new to the channel, please consider subscribing. There's also a link in the description of this video to my Instagram where I post toy photography, toy updates, you know, if there's a new release from Hasbro or Halo or something like that, I share it with the community so people know what's coming. And of course, there's always new content on the way here on YouTube. But anyways, if you made it this far in the video, have a wonderful evening, noon, or night, depending on when you're watching this video. And as always, I will catch you all in the next video. Wow.